Ooh, baby, we got ourselves an exciting video today. I'm super stoked to do this one because I have not seen a video done on it yet. I'm probably subscribed to 25 different narcissistic awareness channels, and I have not seen anyone talk about this yet. So we're gonna be talking about astral projection and the narcissist. Does it ever feel like the narcissist is around, they're close, but you can feel them in your presence. Maybe you even moved across the country to a different country, to a different state, and you can still feel the presence. Astral projection. Let's go. Ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. Welcome back guys, JT here, and I'm super stoked to have all you here. So grateful to see all you guys, and grateful that this community is growing very, very quickly. Um, sorry if you guys can hear the noise outside. There's a guy with a chainsaw cutting down palm trees. It's really annoying, he's been doing it for hours, and I've been waiting, but he is going all day, I guess. So, you know, some will have to deal with. Maybe I can edit it out. Probably not. I'm calm! <laughs> <laughs> but we're today we're talking about astral projection and the narcissist. And this is an incredibly insightful topic because I haven't heard any other narcissistic channels talk about it. If you have heard this before with narcissism, please comment below and let me know so I can go look at it and see the perspective that the other YouTuber is giving because I'm only going off of this with my own experience. I have no research from this in literature or anything. Um, with telepathy, it's very similar. The astral projection and telepathy, very similar because it's more on a spiritual level. It's more on a soul level. It's not here in the physical world. So uh, I'm gonna play a clip for you guys from one of my favorite Marvel movies and we're gonna talk about it. And real quick, I'm gonna give you the definition of Wikipedia of astral projection. And then after the clip, I'll give my definition of astral projection. So Wikipedia. Astro projection, also known as astral travel, is a term used in esotericism to describe an intentional out-of-body experience, or OBE, that assumes the existence of a subtle body known as the astral body or body of light through which consciousness can function separately from the physical body and travel throughout space and time. Whew, that was a mouthful. All right, so super grateful again to have all you here. I hope this video is exciting for you. I'm gonna spend a good amount of time editing it and making it as good as possible. Um, really appreciative of all you guys. Please like and subscribe. Uh, if you're new here, I post a daily video every single day, day on narcissism. I got probably about 150 more videos in the works. There's just so much that goes into narcissism because as you guys know, with soul ties and telepathy, it's more than just the physical world. It's more on the soul level. That's why it's so difficult to break away from narcissism because it's not just in the physical world, it's in the spiritual world as well. So yeah, let's do the clip. Just a little bit. Please be careful with the needle. Steven. What am I seeing? My astral body. Are you dead? No, Chris. All right, so this was a clip from the movie Doctor Strange, one of the Marvel movies. And uh, Doctor Strange is a master of the mysterious arts, I guess you could say, or he's a uh, warlock. And essentially he's dying and he astral projects his body. So his consciousness comes out and he's able to communicate with another person. So with narcissism, <laughs> do you ever feel like they're in your presence all the time? Or especially at nighttime, like it feels like they're right next to you or they're, uh, you know, in your vicinity or close by, or like they're whispering in your ear, or you can hear them like talking to you. And so this takes it a step further than the telepathy. And I highly recommend if you haven't seen the telepathy videos, go watch those. And what you have to understand, so this is my, my uh, definition of 
astro projection. I have done astro projection in the past, many, many, many years ago before I ever knew anything about anything with narcissism. And uh, it's, a, it's a spiritual practice. I'd say it's one step uh, past lucid dreaming. Lucid dreaming is just when you can dream and you become aware that you're dreaming and then you can essentially control the dream. Um, I practiced that for a long time and um, a lot of famous musicians say they compose a lot of their best music in lucid dreaming because essentially you go to bed and then you get another eight hours of being able to practice. You can like pick up a guitar and, and practice, but you have to be able to lucid dream. You have to be able to control the dream because most of the time our dreams are just chaotic and weird and all over the place. But once you learn to be a master of lucid, lucid dreaming, you can pretty much do anything. And then astral projection is like another step further than that. And essentially my definition of that is that you are attaching your soul from your body. So in the physical world, when you go to bed at nighttime, you're, you're in your body, right? And then you switch from your conscious into your subconscious. And essentially, when you can learn to astral project, you can separate your soul, your consciousness from your body, and you can go do whatever you want to do. Go walk around the world, go to travel to different planets. Um, I did a lot of research on this many years ago. And it is like, it's in the spiritual realm, but I'll give you just one of my experiences. And a lot of people talk about this on forums. When you astral project, a lot of people talk about seeing this uh, figure, like a black uh, shadowy figure that's like a man with a hat and you can't see his face. And I remember probably like the third or fourth time I ever did it, I saw it and it is beyond scary. It's like, uh, it doesn't feel good <laughs> like it's 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 not like a happy happy thing because when you're astro projecting too everything is like it's like there's like a a dark filter on everything so it's 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 like you're in the spiritual world almost not quite like you're in the world but it's like there's like a filter on it it's it's very hard to explain but when I saw that, that's when I stopped doing this kind of stuff because then I realized I'm like, mm, maybe this is kind of like going towards the wrong direction. Like maybe this is like uh, not good spiritual. Like this is like witchcraft type, you know, like it, it's really hard because like I'm very, I'm a very godly person. I pray to Jesus every night and uh, God is my Lord and Savior. And I practiced so much spirituality stuff before I was saved. And it's a really hard, fine line to, to put the astral projection in because it's like, I see how it's spirituality, but because I had my experience with it, I see it as it can be dark. It can be, it can be dark. And it also is not very pleasant when you're learning to do it because you have to put yourself in a state of paralysis. And it, I don't know if you guys don't know what paralysis is. Essentially, when you astral project, when you're in your body and you're separating your soul from your body, it sounds so crazy to say this, but hey, once you go through a narcissistic relationship, nothing is crazy anymore. Witches, warlocks, vampires, all that stuff, all that shit is real. <laughs> I never believed it before until I went through a narcissistic relationship because it's, it's not of this world. Narcissistic relationships are not of this world. And they're oftentimes, like I'm, I told you guys, trying to teach you a lesson, maybe try and help you get closer to God, maybe help you understand your shadow self, pull things out. But the reason it's so hard to break away is because it's on a soul level. It's not physical. It's not just in the body. It's in, at a soul level. And to break that soul tie is extremely difficult. But when you put yourself in paralysis, you essentially cannot move your body. And it's like, you're aware of it. And a lot of times, if you've ever, a lot of people go through this just sleeping normal. And sometimes you wake up and you can't move. That's what paralysis is. And it's like, you're trying to move and you're awake and you can like see the ceiling, but your body's like not moving. It's very scary. It doesn't feel good. And every time you astral project, you get that feeling. And it's, it's I never got used to it after like four or five times doing it. I'm like, oh, guys, I don't like this. <laughs> so I never mastered it or anything. But let's talk about how that relates to narcissism. Like I told you guys, a lot of narcissists are into the witchcraft and the dark arts and voodoo and black magic. And that. why can they do this telepathy, strong telepathy, not just like little bits. Why can they send you music? They can send you songs and... It, it, they can get in your mind. It's because it's a soul. It's on a soul connection. It's not body. It's not in the physical world. 
And uh, my narcissist, I told you guys this story, she practiced Ouija boards when she was a kid. She was also a twin, oh, which is even worse. The twins are more powerful, more energetically powerful than most people. So you uh, don't ever date a twin. <laughs> and she died at birth. So she already, uh, she told me stories about the spiritual realm and how she could go to the spiritual realm and all this crazy stuff. And at the time, I didn't believe any of it. I was like, eh, I thought she was just a weird chick. <laughs> like, yeah, okay, you're weird, whatever. <laughs> but uh, yeah, as the, the relationship was closing, getting close to the end, I started realizing, like, as I was learning more about narcissism and researching and and understanding, like, she was serious about all the things she said. And, uh, and then that's when I started thinking about the telepathy and the astral projection, how it always felt like she was around and it got crazy. And I started thinking about this and a lot of, narcissists because they are demonic entities or evil or more connected to the spirit world especially a twin or especially the someone that has died and come back super in that spiritual realm uh they have that connection you don't want to mess with those types of people because then you get stuck in a, a serious soul tie and it is so difficult to break and with the astral projection you know a lot of narcissists that practice uh, witchcraft and love spells. Mine did love spells on me. It's very difficult to break those. And word magic, all that type of stuff. They can astro project and when they're sleeping at nighttime, they can walk They can walk right in your house and lay next to you. Like do, do anything. Why do you think sometimes your sexual dreams are so vivid and feel so real? There's a reason. It's because it's like they're, it's like they're there with you. On a soul level, they're doing these sexual acts with you or laying next to you or whatever it is, they're there with you. When I astro projected, you, it's, you see your body laying on the bed and then you can walk through the world and like, as you progress through it, I never got to this level, but as you master it, you can fly, you can travel to different planets, you could fly to the East Coast and walk into your ex-girlfriend's house if you wanted to saying uh, <laughs> I never do that, but that would be a thought that would come to mind for like a narcissist. Um, but when I did it back many years ago, I walked out of my door, turned the doorknob, went and walked down my street. And it's very eerie, very, like I said, there's like a filter on everything. And I would, I just like looked in the mailbox and I'd come back inside. And then I'd like look at my body and like lay back onto it and go back into paralysis and like wake up. It's very, very eerie. And with narcissists, they they love that stuff. They love that black magic, witchcraft, voodoo dolls, the, the things that are not of this world, the things that most people don't know about because they use that as a manipulation tactic. Everything is a manipulation tactic. Everything is energy. And that is the transmutation of energy. So narcissists, when they're astral projecting, it's a manipulation to try and get you back or to try and coerce you or to try and make you feel like shit or to try and make you... Uh, fall back under their love spell and to make you ruminate about them even more. You know, there's times where I'll, and I know this, I know what time my ex narc always goes to bed and does her thing and does her sex magic and shit. And um, I would always, like, even if I fell asleep a few hours prior, I would wake up at the same time where she's going to bed and doing all that weird shit and I would feel it. I would feel her like right there and I'm like, Oh, and then I have to try and like block it in all these different ways. And I showed you guys a couple different methods on how to do that. But at nighttime, especially while you're trying to sleep, it's, it, it's even more challenging than in the day. Cause in the daytime you have everything to occupy your mind. You can, you know, go for walks, go to the gym. But when you're laying in bed, it's like, okay, well, how do I block all this shit that's coming in? So it is very real guys, witchcraft, warlocks, all that stuff, it is very real. I never believed it until I went through a narcissistic relationship. And please comment in this video, let me know if you guys have gone through similar things like this. I've heard so many, so many hundreds of comments about the telepathy is real and the, the narcissist sending music and, and feeling like their presence is around and that's with the astral projection. Um, let me know your opinions on that. If, if you know anything about astral projection, again, please comment in this. I haven't, I have not seen another narcissistic coach talk about astral projection. So I'd definitely be very interested in hearing a perspective because I'm only going off of my own perspective, but, uh, let's conclude the video for there. And I will do more videos on advanced telepathy and more advanced, 
uh, astral projection and the witchcraft and the love spells. And oh, mine used to put the stuff in foods. Like the, it goes, it goes on to whole nother levels of insanity. People, and you, you try and tell people this, they think you're crazy. Telepathy, telepathy isn't real. You're, you're crazy. You're the crazy one. Till you've gone through a narcissistic relationship, as most of you have, only you know, right? It's hard to tell people about these types of things. And as you become more aware and go down rabbit holes and researching, you're just, you realize how deep it really goes that it's not just a physical thing. It's more on the spiritual side, more in the spiritual realm with the soul and the soul connection, the soul tie goes to a whole nother level. So I hope you guys love that video. I loved doing it for you and please enjoy the day. Please like and subscribe. Let's get this out to as many people as possible because I feel like the world needs to hear about this stuff because everyone is in their own little box and can't think outside of the box. This video is obviously a very outside of the box thinking mentality, right? You know, the, I can talk about regular narcissistic uh, manipulations, the Hoover and gaslighting and gray rocking, all these different techniques and love bombing. And that's normal in the box thinking, but this kind of stuff and the telepathy and sending music and astral projection and soul ties and witchcraft and all that, that's very outside the box thinking. And I don't see many, I, I do see some narcissistic channels talk about it, but not many. So it's a very uh, kind of taboo thing, but I enjoy talking about that stuff because I experienced it firsthand with my narcissist telling me she was a witch multiple times. The last time I ever saw her guys, before we end, the last time I ever saw my narcissist, she said, swear, swear on my life, swear on my life. When I was getting ready to leave, she said, if people knew what I was, I would be burned alive. It's that real. It is so real, guys. <laughs> Until you experience it, as a lot of you have, it's completely life-changing. But you can heal, and you can get better, and you can move forward, guys. Just know that you can, all right? So enjoy the day. Go get a workout in. Stay healthy. Stay safe. I love all of you. And just know you will get through this. All right, later.